Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zenef Mosmeyer from DesignWorks. I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm very excited about discussing with you today about the topic of designing emotional experiences in an autonomous area. I will do this very specifically from a design point of view, as I come from a creative environment. And I really enjoyed the talks before, and it's very important to see what it takes for a designer to look into the future and deal with all these changes in technology and how to create meaningful solutions for users. Because at the end of the day, we want to create enjoyable experiences and make a better life for all of us in the future. But let's first take a look about cities. What we like to do in our creative process when it comes to cities is to compare them with people. People and cities, they have personalities. They have a specific changes. They move. They challenge us every day. And this is exactly what's happening at the moment. If we think about mega cities, and you are a user needing to move from A to B, you start dealing with absolutely new choices that you didn't have before. It's not about picking a specific vehicle any longer. It's about where do I get this vehicle? Where do I charge it? Am I even sharing it with somebody else? So from all of a sudden, we have absolutely new decisions that we have to make. On the other hand, what cities are also having is a lot of great new opportunities. Because what we know at the moment is that big data, autonomous driving, and artificial intelligence enable a lot of new opportunities to create enjoyable experiences. But there is another big shift that we have been observing, which is really interesting. And this is the fact that we are not longer obligated to go out of our houses to do the things that we have to do throughout the day. If we think about how it was years ago, we needed to get out of our house, to go to work, to go to university, to do grocery shopping. This is all in the past, because now we have the choice to get everything at home. Technology services are so advanced that basically we can stay at home and everything will come to us. And this is exactly the exciting thing about this, because mobility has a shift. We're moving the purpose from being obligated to get out of the house and start making decisions out of an emotional perspective. And this is really cool if you think about it. If we look at an example, if your grocery shopping is being delivered to your home, you basically don't need to get out of your home any longer. But what happens if you choose to do so? Because we still want to go to that specific shop two corners away and grab your tomatoes because you feel happy about this. And this is exactly the great thing about this, because when we start making mobility decisions out of emotional reasons, we have a lot of new opportunities to create new services and new alternatives for users. Now, when it comes to autonomous mobility, this is also very exciting because, on one hand, this technology has been already developed for decades. But the, the most important thing is that it enables a platform to create enjoyable experiences. Let's imagine how it is to be in a traffic jam nowadays. It's really annoying, right? You're sitting in your car and everything is loud. You don't really know when you're going to get home. But what happens if this changes? What happens if from all of a sudden you are being driven and you can use this time to do things that you like? So for example, talking to your family, learning a new language, even working. So all these things enable a complete new experience. So these are exciting times also for automotive manufacturers as these enables completely new offerings when it comes to services. Beyond this, what we also know is that the focus at the moment lies on safety and design because these are levers to generate trust. And humans, we like to build relationships. And when it comes to new technologies, we're very happy to have the chance to generate trust first. So now, from the perspective of a designer, what does it take to design emotional experiences in an autonomous time, in an autonomous era? And what's very clear is that the future is not isolated. It's about systems. 
And I would like to use autonomous driving as an example about how to make the future better. As we have heard, cities are struggling right now with topics about air quality. But in the future, we're really talking about a space issue because cities will have the challenge to fit a solution and enough offerings for people to come from A to B, which means basically that the responsibility of us as designers is to think about new ways about how to move people. And this could work also with help of autonomous driving in combination with other services like the ride sharing and also public transportation. And it is considered that if we manage to orchestrate all these systems, we will be able to optimize the space in cities and thereby making these cities more livable. And beyond that, as a designers, we also have the great task not only to think within the horizontal X, it's also about looking for other alternatives. I would like to give this example to you. This is an air taxi, which it's not only very beautiful, it also helps us to optimize the way that we could move within cities. This is a new sustainable solution that is even powered by hydrogen, and it can be used for personal and also for shared mobility. And the great thing about this is that it can be integrated in already existing systems. Another topic is also to create richer experiences. And for us, as creatives, it's very important to generate real value and also to bring quality. This home office spot that you can see here, it's, a, it's like a jewel. It's a very simple solution for a, for a very big challenge that some people have. Let's think about home office, for example. Why I'm bringing this example to you is because it's very important to see that richer experiences can be something that make our life more human. What I like very much about this is that if I'm moving and if I'm everywhere, I still have the chance to work and I, and I feel more free by having this. And then the next topic that we have as well as designer is responsibility to think about new and smarter ways to move. So every day we have the challenge to rethink mobility. And it doesn't matter if we're riding a bike, driving a car, or flying. We see our responsibility in looking for alternative ways to make a better future. Mobility is something fascinating. And it does not only influence the f how, to how we get to the future, it also influences the type of future that we would like to live in. And last but not least, what does it mean to design for trust? I will give you an example. When we think about virtual assistants at home, and I'm talking to my virtual assistant, I'm very happy to see that it's lightening up into my direction. I feel embraced. I feel hurt. If you think about this, this is a very simple emotional gesture. But it gives me the feeling that I am being hurt, and I feel a connection to this. So if we take autonomous driving or artificial intelligence or new technologies and we as designers manage a way to curate these emotions and bring a connection between design, innovation and technology in a meaningful way, we will be able to generate trust. And we as humans, we feel very well when we trust things and this helps us also to build a new connection and to embrace new technologies. And if we manage to embrace these new technologies, we're thinking about a positive future. Because at the end of the day, we have responsibility not only for us, but also for the next generations. And the most important thing is whatever we do, it's good if we have joy on that. So I invite you to design for the future. Thank you very much.